Mm-hmm. Welcome back to Mr. Hassan's math channel. Um, I'm going to go through question number two now from the October 2020 Pure Mathematics P1 International A Level Edexcel paper. And this question, part A, is about completing the square. And it's asking us um, to complete the square to express f of x. So it's the function f of x is equal to 3 plus 12x minus 2x squared. Express f of x in the form a minus b times x plus c all squared, where a, b, and c are integers to be found. Okay, so basically we have to complete the square for this. So we start off with f of x as they gave us 3 plus 12x minus 2x squared. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange it to write it in terms of x squared first. So minus 2x squared plus 12x plus 3. And now what I'm going to do now, different people tackle this type of question in different ways. What I'm going to do first here is I'm going to, um, I'm concerned really about the x squared and x term. Okay, I want to, this has to say x squared. Basically, this must say x squared, not minus 2x squared, not minus x squared, but x squared. So I'm going to take out minus 2, and it happens to be a factor of these first two terms. So this is going to be x squared, and I'm going to write this, this has to be minus 6x. Okay, now, some people, they also take out a 2, factor of 2 from here, so they'll write this as plus 3 over 2, but I'm not going to do that, because... I'm concerned more about these two terms. This I want to complete the square for what's inside here. I find it a lot easier to just deal with the x squared and the x term. So I've taken out minus 2, so I'm left with positive x squared. My, that was my objective. Okay, Not just because minus 2 or 2 is a factor of both these terms. Even if 2 was not a factor of the 12x, I would still take out a minus 2 to get rid of the minus sign, to get rid of the 2 that's multiplying the x squared. And whatever's here, I'd have to divide it by minus 2. So whatever's here has to be divided by minus 2, so I get minus 6x. Okay, now I'm, I haven't started completing the square yet. What I'm doing is I'm getting it ready to complete the square. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to complete the square for what's inside this bracket here. So I have minus 2. Now I'm going to complete the square for what's inside this bracket and then have the plus 3 at the end. So to complete the square, what you have to do is you have to write a bracket which is a square bracket, something squared. Okay, I'm going to have x, I'm going to have a minus, and I take a half of the coefficient of the x term without writing the x. Because if I expand this, I'm going to get x squared minus 6x plus 9. Okay, but as you see, there's no plus 9 here. So I'm going to take away that 9. Now when I expand x minus 3 all squared minus 9, it was going to give me x squared minus 6x plus 9 minus 9, which will leave me with x squared minus 6x. And that's exactly what I want. So this and this are exactly the same. These two have exactly the same value. So this and this are exactly the same thing. Okay, but and now I've got it in the form that I want it, where I have got a square bracket, because they want us to express it in this, in this form with the square bracket. So that's the reason why I did that. So now I can just tidy it up by multiplying minus 2 with these two terms inside the bracket. So it's minus 2 times x minus 3 squared, and minus 2 times minus 9, which is plus 18. And I've got my plus 3. And finally, 18 plus 3 is 21. So I can write this finally in the form that they want to, they, we can say therefore f of x is equal to, you have 18 plus 3 which is 21 minus 2 times x minus 3 squared and there's the answer to our question. f of x equals 21 minus 2 times x minus 3 all squared and it says where a, b and c are integers to be found. It says express it in this form. So you could leave it like that if you want to. There's absolutely no form because they're saying express it in this form. And now we have question 2, part B. It tells us that the curve with equation y equals f of x minus 7 crosses the x-axis at the points P and Q and crosses the y-axis at the point R. Find the area of the triangle PQR, giving you answers in the form m times the square root of n, where m and n are integers to be found. And... Um, okay, so this is the original equation, and this is how we rearranged it in terms of completing the square. So we need to find the points P, Q, and R, which are the x and the y intercepts for this. So basically, to find the um, y intercept, y intercept is when f of x equals zero, and I guess the easiest one to use for that is this one. So you're gonna, sorry, when um, x is equal to zero, 
to find the y-intercept is when x equals 0. The, it hits the y-axis when x equals 0, and it hits the x-axis when y equals 0. So we, to find the y-intercept, we have to put x equals 0. So it's easy for us to replace x with 0 in probably the first equation. You end up with 3, don't you? Because you've got 12 times, f of 12 times 0 minus 2x squared. However, this equation here is not f of x, and that's what we have to be careful of. It says y equals f of x minus 7. So first of all, we see, say y equals f of x minus 7. So we must read the question carefully. So our equation, f of x, uh, our new equation, let's call it y. Okay, our new equation is y equals f of x minus 7, which is 3 plus 12x minus 2x squared minus 7. Okay, which is going to be um, basically minus 2x squared. And you're going to have plus... 12x and you're going to have 3 minus 7 which is minus 4 so this is our new equation this is the equation that this is the graph which we're talking about finding the area of okay that's the graph we're finding the area of and we can also say that um, y is also equal to 21 minus 2 times x minus 3 squared minus 7 so that's going to be 21 minus 7 um, 21 minus 7 which is going to be 14 minus 2 times x minus 3 squared. So that's um, the equation in the form of completed the square, where you take away 7 from the whole function. So th these, are the, these are the equations, or this is the equation in two different forms of the graph that we have to think about, which crosses the y-axis and the x-axis at the points given. Okay, so now it crosses the, the, the x-axis, when y equals 0 and it crosses the y axis when x equals 0 so let's let's see where it crosses the y axis first of course this is easiest for us to tell from this from this equation so it crosses the y axis when y is equal to basically minus 4 okay that's when x equals 0 you're going to have y equals minus 4 so that's going to be the coordinates of the point where it crosses the y axis which is the point um, crosses the x-axis and that's going to be the point R and it crosses the x-axis when y equals 0 now we have to solve the equation f of x equals 0 or oh, sorry not f of x y equals 0 because we've got f of x is the original equation this is y where you've taken away 7 from it now we can solve this equation by taking this and solving it using the quadratic formula or completing the square Okay, but because we already have it in this form, it's easy for us to just use this form. This is this is much easier for us to do because it's already in the form where we completed the square. We already completed the square for it. Just had to take away seven from our original answer, and this is it's very easy for us now to solve this without having to use a formula. So we can just basically rearrange this. Say fourteen equals two times x minus three squared. So we have x minus three squared is equal to seven. So x minus 3 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 7. So x is equal to 3 plus or minus the square root of 7. So we have the points um, P, Q, R. So we've got P, Q, R. So let's say P is the first point. So let's say P is 3. And Sorry, P is 3 minus or 3 minus root 7. That would be the smaller one. And zero and q we could say is three plus root seven and zero. Those are the x-intercepts. So those are the two places where this graph crosses the x-axis. Okay, so now we're going to make a little little sketch to find the area. So let's have our pair of axes. We know that the point R is at zero minus four. And you can see that uh, root 7 is going to be something which is, um, it's going to be less than 3, of course, because root 9 is 3, so it's going to be positive. So let's say P is here, okay, because uh, root th root 7 is less, less it's going to be something less than 3. 3 minus something less than 3 is even positive. And Q is going to be somewhere over here, which is 3 plus root 7, of course, more than that. So that's P and that's Q. <coughs> so that's 3 plus root 7. And that's 3 minus root 7. So we have to find the area of this triangle over here. Now there's a couple of ways you could find the area of this triangle. 
One of them is just by thinking about a triangle like this, as we have here. And you could say, okay, it's a. we can take this as the base, we can take this as the base, and this as the vertical height. So this is going to be like four units. And this base is going to be the difference between three minus root seven, sorry, three plus root seven, three plus root seven, and three minus root seven. If you take them away from each other, what you'll notice is you'll have three minus three, which is zero, and root seven minus minus root seven, which will give you two root seven. So this is two root seven. And so you'll say the area is going to be a half times the base, which is two root seven, times the height, which is four units. So you end up with the area is equal to four root seven. Okay, that's one way of doing it. And that's four root seven square units. You could, you could also take it as two separate triangles. You could take it as like this big triangle here, which is a big right angle triangle, and whose base is a half. I mean, this is the easier way, but some people also did it like this, and it's perfectly correct. You can do a half times the base of the big triangle, which is going to be from there to there, which is going to be uh, 3 plus root 7. But I have to put it in brackets times the vertical height, which is 4. And then take away from that the area of this small triangle, and you're left with the triangle that we want. And the small triangle is a half times, this is from there to there, is 3 minus root 7. So it's 3 minus root 7 times 4. And this also gives you the same answer. Okay, it will give you exactly the same answer because this will cancel with that giving you 2. That will cancel that giving you 2. You'll end up with 6 and minus 6, which is 0. And you have 2 root 7 minus minus 2 root 7, which is 2 root 7 plus root 7, which is plus 2 root 7, which gives you 4 root 7 units squared. Thinking about it in this way, is much easier and you get to the answer but that's fine so here there's a few points I need to mention here some people what they did when I gave this paper for my class as a test they took this and they found the answer for this by doing the following they basically just used a calculator and said okay let's use the whoops not that let's use the um, equation mode so they went to the equation mode and they 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 did that they said okay it's a polynomial it's a degree two quadratic and they put in minus two and they pressed equals and they put in 12 press equals and they put in a minus four and they press equals and they press equals and it gave you three plus root seven and 3 minus root 7 and you know that was how they found the answer so the next thing was you know x equals 3 3 plus root 7 and 3 minus root 7 without showing any steps now if you did that you would definitely lose in fact two marks not just one mark one would be a mark for not doing it here the other one they actually take off the from the answer mark as well but anyway the point is very important for you to realize that you should show your steps when you are solving a quadratic equation. So you could have used the quadratic formula if you wanted to do that. That's perfectly fine. You could have used a quadratic formula. You could have also used, um, as I did, completing the square. And this whole question is set, set up really for you to use completing the square because you have it in this form here. So it's very easy for you to complete the square. But if you're not comfortable with that and you wanted to use a formula, then you have to use the formula which is minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now, quoting this formula is not enough for you to get the marks. If you were going to use a quadratic formula, you'd have to use it in this form. And you'd have to put in the value. So you'd have to put in minus, minus 2. Or even if you put plus 2, that's fine because it's going to become a positive. Plus or minus the square root of minus 2 all squared minus 4 times 3 times minus 4 for AC all, all over 2A 2 times minus 2 <coughs> if you wrote that step down and if you uh, went on to write the answer as these that's perfectly fine but if you didn't write this step down 
and you just quoted the formula and then wrote the answer down, then that's a problem. Okay, they, they don't want to see you quoting the formula alone. I mean, even if you didn't quote the formula and you wrote this, it's fine. Because you've shown how to use a quadratic formula, you know exactly how to use it, you know what to put in what place, and that's what they're looking for. If you're going to use a formula, doing you writing this step is what you need to do. Writing this step is not necessary, and if you only write this step, you will lose marks. That's not sufficient for you to get the marks for using the formula to solve this problem. As I said, this problem is kind of set up for you to use completing the square. Okay, because you already have completed the square for the first part of the question. You just had to take away 7 from that and equate it to 0 and then use completing the square. Or well, It's already done actually for you, but use that to, find, to carry on and find the solutions. And then from that, you can see where the x and y intercepts are and you can work out the area of the triangle really easily. Okay, that's the vertical height and that's the base. Or if you want, that's a big triangle and that's a smaller triangle. Take away the small triangle from the big triangle and you're left with the area required. Okay, so there's the answer for question number two. And uh, please beware of those points about showing your steps solving quadratic equations. It's a source of great um, loss of marks for many students in this particular paper. Okay, thank you for watching. And now other questions from this same paper will be found on the playlist that should appear somewhere over here. Underneath here, you'll have a playlist which has got something to do with um, this topic of graphs and equations. Um, and on the top here, you will have a card taking you to um, another P1 paper somewhere. And you can subscribe to my channel if you wish by clicking on the subscription icon, which should appear in the middle here somewhere. Thank you for watching. Hope to see you soon.